أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد بن عبد الله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا عبده ورسوله أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون فيا أيها المستمعون الكرام الله سبحانه وتعالى عز وجل قال يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون فقد قال الله تعالى أيضا يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا فيا أيها الحبة في الله فقد قال الله تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما عما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث دائما وأبدا كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد بن عبد الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد Indeed all praises and thanks and gratitude is directed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So we praise him we bear witness to the fact that there is nothing worthy of any type of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we also bear witness to the fact that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam huwa afdalul abd that he is the best of slave to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen to guide to the straight path no one can misguide that individual except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself and whomsoever Allah has left to be misguided because of their own thinking and their own mistakes, no one can guide such an individual except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear listeners, I remind you of a very important ayah in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, O ye who believe, O believers, you and I, people who carry the banner of La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu attaqullah, be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, constantly think and be conscious that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu attaqullah haqqa tuqati, in the capacity that Allah deserves from you to be conscious of Him. Haqqa tuqati, in the capacity that Allah deserves from you to be conscious of Him. This is the meaning of haqqa tuqati. وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا And do not exit and leave this living world إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Except that you are a believer. Except that you are a Muslim. Except that you are a mu'min. That you die upon the tawheed and the oneness and the iman of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala azza wa jal. Now, my dear brothers, and if there's any sisters, we are coming to the month, or we are in the month of Rabi al Awwal. Uh, we're actually approaching maybe the last week towards the ending of Rabi al Awwal. And there's some significant moments that took place in this month. One of, the, one of the most important things that took place in this month 
was the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. You hear this, huh? In all the masajid, you hear that the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam was born in this month. They give lectures and programs and so forth. This month was also the month where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam died. Huh? It's not only his birth, but this month serves as the month that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam left this dunya. He left us. So therefore, my topic to you today in this khutbah, inshallah, is that he was born on the month of Rabi'ul Awwal and he lived his life and he returned back to Rabi'ul Awwal and he left. So, I would like to touch on that circle two important moments, two important يعني, مهم مهم, two important things that occurred at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it's important for us, not, that, not only that he was born, but his death. Now, these two moments I would like to touch on is first of all very important moments at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam why because these two moments he cried a lot he cried and he weep so let us begin inshallah so the time doesn't run out on us there was a sahabi by the name of Uthman ibn Mad'un Uthman ibn Mad'un, he was one of those who accepted Islam in the hadith. It said that he was one of the, those of the first 50 who accepted Islam. In another narration, they say it is one of the first 14 who accepted Islam. Abdullah ibn Mad'un, Uthman ibn Mad'un, before the coming of Al Islam, the Risala al Islam to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was a noble man. He was a good man. Even before the advent and the coming of Islam, he was a good man. He never took part in Sharb al Khamr. He never took part in alcohol. He never took part in smoke, anything that bothers his mind or destroys his mind. But he always stood firm upon what is good. This is Uthman ibn Mad'un. He was one of the Sahabi who migrated not once but twice for the cause of Islam. He migrated from Medina to Habasha to spread the deen of Islam. Huh? And then after that to Mecca to continue the work of Al-Islam. He is one of the Sahabi that fought besides Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the battle of Badr. In defending Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Kana abdan zahidan. That he was a true worshipper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kana abdan. He was a true believer and a true worshipper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Zahidan, and he never took importance and held on to what was happening in this dunya. For the dunya meant little to him. Uthman ibn Mad'un was amongst the first Sahabi, subhanallah, to be buried in Jannah al Baqi. He was the first one to be buried in Jannah al-Baqi, in Medina Munawwara, in the grave, next to the grave of Rasulullah in al Medina. Many of you know this place. He was the first Sahabi to be buried there. He was a very noble, honest individual. 
once he entered the masjid with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and some of his companions were sitting and as he entered the masjid some of his companions began, began to cry upon seeing him because his clothes was very old and ripped and had patches all over it and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said no don't cry because in Jannah he will be very well clothed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Azza wa Jal So Uthman There was a narration by Aisha radiallahu anha concerning this great Sahabi What did she say? Aisha radiallahu anha she said when this Sahabi died Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entered this room and upon seeing the body of Uthman ibn Mad'un Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fell to his knees he fell upon the body of Uthman and when he fell upon the body of Uthman he hugged Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hugged Uthman hugged them and held them tight and kissed him and began to weep Uthman ibn Marun began to weep and the narration in the hadith in the Arabic terminology they use the word tasil ala waji the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he cried so much that his tears were dripping from his beard upon the face of Uthman ibn Mad'un. This is how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam held the Sahaba. Why? The reason was he defended Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He spread the deen of Islam. He held on. Kana abdan. He was a true worshipper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he felt very close to Uthman. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam could not control himself. And he himself led the janazah of Uthman. And he himself buried him and put a stone and left a little dirt above the earth so he can know where Uthman was buried in Jannah al-Baqi, the first one to be buried. My dear brothers and sisters, what is the greatest calamity? When you hear these type of stories, you say to yourself, SubhanAllah, this could be one of the, this is one of the toughest times the Muslim felt. But I ask you today, what is the greatest calamity or tragedy that ever afflicted the Ummah of the Muslims? The Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What is the greatest calamity? You know what is the greatest calamity that ever afflicted the Muslim Ummah? Was, 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 was an incident that took place in Rabiul Awwal. The greatest calamity and tragedy that ever afflicted the Muslim Ummah was the death of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because even the Kuffar and the Munafiqoon and the Mushrikeen, they knew that if Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were to die, that would be the end of Islam. And we see this in the Battle of Uhud. We see this in when the, the Mushrikeen came and said that Mata Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is dead huh? and what did the sahabas did? they put down their swords and they put down their weapons and their spears and their shields and whatever and they began to cry and weep that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but Anas came and Anas said, why don't you defend what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam defended? Why don't you fight and fought for what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fought for? For he fought for la ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. 
He's not dead. So the mushrikeen, they played this to, to, to disturb the Muslims. Because they knew the importance of the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And that was in the battle of Uhud. You see, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he stand up and gave his life. He gave his life for what? Upon teaching us Tawheed. Upon giving us good life. Upon teaching us La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. But it's not that simple. It's not that simple. And I will tell you why it's not that simple. Because it's going to come up in about 10, 10 to 15 minutes. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he lived his life fully upon one thing only. One thing only. And that was Tawheed. How many Muslim, whether you Arab or not, whether you Arabic speaking or not, how many of us ever took the time to understand what is Tawheed? How many of us ever took the time and study what is Tawheed? Tawheed al-Rubuiya, Tawheed al-Asma wa sifat wa Tawheed al How many of us ever take this time and understand this? The Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his entire life he spent on this. To teach us and bring us, bring us Tawheed. My dear brothers and sisters, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a few days before his death, a few days before his death, you know it is narrated in Bukhari, that he used to constantly go to the graves and say salam to the Ahl al-Qabr, to the people of the grave. But one morning, he went to the grave. When he went to the grave, the Sahabi noticed he went to three places. He went to the grave of Uhud, he went to the grave of Baqiya, Jannat al Baqi, and he also went to the grave of Badr. And when he visited these, these, it was strange for him to go to all three graves at the same time. And it was also strange to see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam crying so much while visiting these graves. So, they asked him, Ya Rasulullah, what is so different? He didn't answer. He went home. And he told Aisha radiallahu anha, Ya Aisha, I'm not feeling well. I feel sick. I feel sick. Then, he said, Aisha, call Abu Bakr. I would like to speak to him. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told Abu Bakr that Ya Abu Bakr as of today I would like you to lead this salah in Masjid Nabawi in my masjid I would like you to lead this salah because I am not feeling well at that time in Medina it's a similar time like we have now there's humma. For the Arab, they understand what is humma. Humma means like an infection, like a fever, high fever. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was suffering from high fever. Infection and cold and cough, flu-like symptoms. Huh? So he told Abu Bakr, from today on, you need to lead the salah in the Prophet Masjid. <coughs> Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he became very weak. He became even more sick. He would ask his wife to constantly bring a bucket of water, constantly, every so often, bring a bucket of water just to cool me off. That's how hot his fever was. Just to cool me off. And they would bring the cold or the lukewarm water and 
wash the body of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam just to cool him off from the high fever he was suffering from. He would constantly make dua and complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of his pain and suffering. Now we learn something from this. When we get sick, who do we complain to? We complain to the physicians and to the doctors and to our parents or to our loved ones. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he never complained to anybody. During his sickness, he would make dua and complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only. My dear brothers and sisters, a few days before his death, about three to four days before his death, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came out of his home. But he didn't just came out like that. He was carried by Ali radiallahu anhu. Ali carried the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the masjid, Masjid Nawawi. And he sat there and he gave his ummah the last advice that he would speak to them. This was the last time he would speak to us, his ummah. What did he say? Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen was salatu was salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een amma ba'd Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a few days before his death his departure from this dunya he sat and he spoke and he advised his ummah for the last time what was his advice? He said, As-salah, as-salah. Pray, pray. Namaz, namaz. Then he said to the Ansar, he said to the Ansar, that you've opened up your doors and your homes to the muhajireen. Allah will bless you for that. And he said to the muhajireen, be thankful and grateful to the Ansar because they took care of you. Don't forget them. Always remember the Ansar. And then he said, he recited Surah An-Nasr. إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ إِلَىٰ آخِرِهَا To the end of the surah. And upon Abu Bakr, when Abu Bakr heard that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited the surah, he began to cry. And he stood up. And he said, Ya Rasul. And he made dua to Allah that if me, Abu Bakr, could be taken instead of you, Ya Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Ya Allah, take me instead of Muhammad. If not me, take my son instead of Muhammad. Because Abu Bakr knew from the meaning and the tafsir of إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ That the help and the victory of Allah is here. Multitude of millions and millions of Muslims will enter the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no more need for Muhammad for he's leaving us in this dunya. So Abu Bakr knew that. He started crying. He asked Allah to take him instead. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after he began, he finished reciting the surah, he became even more sick and more sick. And he was taken back to the room of Aisha radiallahu anha. And she became the sole caretaker of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his last moments. Now we will now discuss his last moments. <coughs> Every time Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know sometimes when you have high fever, it puts you to sleep or it knocks you out. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will gain consciousness, he will say, Hal salal al qawm Did my ummah pray? Did my ummah pray? He would ask Aisha radiallahu anha. And then Aisha will reply, yes. They've prayed. This was his concern. He was not one concern about going to the hospital or getting the best physician or living another day or two. No. He was concerned about his ummah. About us. Did you pray? Did my ummah pray? <coughs> Subhanallah. Few moments before his death, he asked Aisha radiallahu anha, Ya Aisha, what do I have left in my life? Aisha said, You have seven coins, sab'a darahim. Seven coins. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Take those seven coins and give it in charity because I want it to benefit me when I face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A man who was giving the highest place of Jannatul Firdaus is asking Aisha to give the seven coins in charity. Subhanallah. His future, his past sins were forgiven. He would say, Astaghfirullah, Sabaeen Mara, or Miatu Mara. 70 to 100 times per day. How many times do we say that? But he asked Aisha the last moments before he died to take those seven coins and give it in charity. Subhanallah. Aisha radiallahu anha, because this is her husband, and he's a prophet of Allah, the leader of the ummah, the leader of the world. Now he's the leader of the world now, you know. He's a prophet of Allah. She's extremely busy. The such an important Rasul is about to leave this dunya, and she's the wife. She forgot to give those seven coins. She forgot. Moments, seconds before Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his eyes was, were to be closed, he reminded her that Aisha, I'm leaving this dunya. Do not forget to give those seven coins. He was concerned. He was very concerned about that. His final night, his final night, Aisha radiallahu anha narrated in the hadith, and you will find this in Tafsir ibn Kathir. You will also find this in Imam Muslim, that her brother, Abdul Rahman, entered the room where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Aisha was. When Abdul Rahman entered the room, because of the weakness and the sickness of Rasulullah, he couldn't speak anymore. Nor could he move his hands anymore. So he looked at the siwak or the miswak that was in the pocket of Abdul Rahman. Huh? In the pocket. He just looked. Aisha radiallahu anha she knew that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa used to love to brush his teeth 
at the beginning, in the morning, and before he goes to bed, and before every salah. So she knew that he wanted to brush his teeth. So she took the siwak or the miswak from her brother, and she moistened it with her own mouth, and chew on it and make it soft for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And she began to brush the teeth of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And after she did that, she brushed her own teeth with it. And then she said, "This was the last time my saliva touched the saliva of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam." Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he looked up into the sky into the roof or to the ceiling and he raised his hand and you find this in Tafsir ibn Kathir he raised his hand and he pointed to the sky and then he said he said I choose I choose to be amongst the most noblest of people, the prophets. And then his hands fell upon his chest. And that was the end of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And upon his hand falling on his chest, Aisha radiallahu anha began to scream. She screamed so much that Abu Bakr and Ali ran into the room and said, Aisha, what happened? But the matter of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But really, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has left us. Immediately after that, Abu Bakr and Ali came out and they tell the people of Medina, Ahl al Medina, that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has finally left us. And we turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The entire Medina was crying. And the hadith states, it was so much crying and wailing on that day that it felt as though Medina had an earthquake. It was shaking. Zilzal. Subhanallah. Umar radiallahu anhu. He couldn't believe that the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is dead. He could not believe for he took his sword out and he said, anyone who says Muhammad is dead, I will kill him. For he thought Muhammad will return. He thought Muhammad will return one day. No. For Allah has written death for the son of Adam only once. That was Umar. And Ali radiallahu anha, he was unable to speak. He, he was dumbfounded. He, he could not speak. His, his tongue was tied. He left shocked, stunned. The hadith said he was immobilized. He, he couldn't move. Uthman ibn Affan, his tongue could not, could not speak and he couldn't say a word. For he left shocked and couldn't move. There was another Sahaba from the Ansar. He said, Ya Allah, when I accepted Al Islam, I spent so much time with Muhammad, I'm used to seeing him. Upon making that dua, he became blind. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused him to see Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam again. He became blind. He said he don't want to see anybody else besides Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him before he died, don't worry about my janazah. Don't pray upon my body because none of you None of you are replicable enough to lead my janazah. For the angels, the angels 
will lead my janaza. Angel Jibrail and Mikael and thousands and thousands of angels will descend and they will lead my janaza. So don't worry about my janaza. Ali radiallahu anhu he took the body of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he made ghusl. For he washed, he left the clothing of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he washed underneath by rubbing his hands with water and washing the body of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Bakr entered the room. And upon entering the room, he uncovered the face of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he hugged him and he kissed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said Ya Rasul you were very beautiful in this dunya you were always full of the, the best fragrance in this dunya and now today you are even more handsome more beautiful and you smell more of fragrance. Subhanallah. All of the people of Medina came, thousands and thousands came to give the salam and final salam to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is why it's a sunnah for us when we, visit, when we visit Mecca, Medina, it's always a strong sunnah to go and say salam to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear brothers and sisters, I will end by telling you one thing that occurred when they buried the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and by giving you a profound statement of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When they buried Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ali, when he returned home, Aisha radiallahu anha asked him, Ya Ali, how did you feel how did your heart felt when you were throwing dirt upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? How did, did your heart feel? <coughs> Ali radiallahu anhu, he could not answer. He turned away and he started crying and he walked away. Subhanallah. I end by telling you a very important statement of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if everyone who is sleeping in this khutbah, it's okay, maybe you're tired. But it's time for you to wake up and take something home with you in this khutbah. And that is, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna dunya خُلِقَتْ لَكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ خَلَقَتُمُ الْآخِرَةِ That this dunya was created for you, but you were created for the akhirah. Subhanallah. This dunya, inna dunya khuliqat lakum. This dunya was created for you. But you were not created for the dunya. وَأَنْتُمْ خَلَقَتُمْ الْآخِرَةِ But you were created for the akhirah. Allahumma ihdina l-Islam wal-Muslimin. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqa warzukna tiba'ah. Wa arina al-batila batila warzukna ijtinaba. Allahumma iyaka na'abud. Walaka nusalli wa nasjud. Wa ilayka nas'a wa nahfidh. نرجو رحمتك ونخشى عذابك إن عذابك الجد بالكفار ملحق لك الحمد حتى ترضى ولك الحمد بعد الرضا أقم الصلاة
فإن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر